Hey there everyone, today I'm going to show you a little video on how to use your smartphone camera. We all carry these with us, uh, and if you haven't got your camera, they make a, a pretty good alternative. We'll start with the basics, then we'll go into some more advanced settings, uh, and then we'll show you some accessories, and then finally just some apps and things that you can use to process your photos as well. Okay, let's get straight into it. Okay, so we're just going to start off with some basic settings. Uh, first of all is your focusing. Now most smartphone cameras will autofocus just depending on wherever the subject is. It should, there we go, pick out the focus for you. However if you want to manual focus all you simply have to do is touch the screen. So if I touch this chap at the front it'll focus on him. Tap, tap in the middle, same thing applies. And then the little guy at the back does the same again. Now you may just notice that the little line on the right hand side appears with the sun in it and a little unlocked padlock on top and what you can do is you can actually lock in your autofocus and your auto exposure so that the focal point doesn't change and your exposure doesn't change you can actually change that manual I'll show you how to do that so if I tap on the chap in the front it focuses on him and I press the padlock the padlock locks and as you can see on the top of the middle of the screen there there's a little padlock with AEAF lock. So that is now uh, focus locked and it is also exposure locked. However, if I want to change the exposure, the line underneath the padlock with the little sun in the middle, if you just put your finger on the sun and drag it up or down, you can change the exposure manually. Now, most smartphones, for some reason, tend to overexpose. So you can always just dial down your exposure a little bit manually if you wish to do so. If you're not happy with your focal point, you can just unlock it again, tap somewhere else, lock it in again. Uh, again, not happy, just unlock, tap on something else, lock it in. Easy, as simple as that. So we'll unlock that, go back to that one. Now on the left hand side here, I've got a little menu. Uh, you can see in the top left hand corner, it says HDR with a line through it. Then we've got the little macro symbol, the flower. Uh, then we've got the flash symbol underneath that. The little box with the two arrows from bottom left corner to top right corner are the size of the picture, which you can choose and, and change as, as you wish. And then below that, we've got the self timer. So I'll just give you a quick run through of these. So if I tap the HDR, I've got three options there. I can either have it on permanently, the little top one, HDR Auto, obviously it will choose whether or not it thinks it needs HDR for the photo. And at the very bottom, the line through it means that you don't want to have HDR. So we'll leave it on that one. The flower one, for me, on this camera is a super macro setting. So if I were to pick one of these little guys up, bring them right up in close, tap on the screen, it focuses. And you can actually get some really close-up shots with this. Um, when we tried it on Club Night, I was quite impressed by how close you can actually get. And it focuses. So that's the macro mode. Pop that there. Turn that one off. Okay. So then we've got the flash. So if we press that one. So your top left one is flash on. So regardless of what picture you take, it will fire the flash for you. The middle one is your automatic setting, so it will choose whether or not it thinks it needs flash or not. And obviously the bottom one is your flash off setting, so I'm going to turn that off because we don't need that at the moment. Okay, uh, sizing I'll come back into in a minute. So the one at the very bottom is your timer. So if you've got a little tripod or a wall or anything you can sit it on just to, and you want to just to make sure that you don't move your phone at all so that you get a, a good sharp picture as such. You can just fire off your timer. Um, so on this one, uh, at the very top left hand corner, we've got 10 seconds, then five seconds, then three seconds, or not at all. So if I were to just put that on three seconds, let's focus it up, press the button, it counts down, takes the picture for you. Again, it stops any sort of camera shake or camera wobble, makes life a little easier. Okay, let me turn that one back off. So the sizing. 
So that's the little square with the two arrows pointing in opposite directions into the corner. So let's tap that one. So I'll start off with a full screen. So whatever you see across your screen is the full size. Underneath we've got four by three. So you can take a four by three photo. So if you wanted to do a competition with it, you can, and um, the competitions allow you to do a four three format, you can do so. And then we've got the final one is the one by one, which is obviously the square, uh, which a lot of uh, social media sites like Instagram prefer. It saves them having to resize everything for you. Um, what you then what you then take is what you will get. Um, you don't have to do any alterations to it. So let's go back to full screen. Uh, the only one difference on this phone, I'll, some of these modern phones now have different lenses, and they're actually built into the camera. So on this one, this is the standard LEDs on one times, and you can just see underneath it, there's three little trees, and then on top of it is one big tree. So these are the different lenses. So if I touch the bottom one, it goes to the 0 by 6 which gives me the wide angle lens. If I touch the top one, that's the uh, telephoto lens. So again, you can alter and change as you so wish. Let me just go back onto the middle one. So that's basically your basic settings. Now we'll move on to some advanced settings. Okay, so on to some advanced settings. So if I just bring up my little menu there for all my different types of photographs, uh, I have portrait mode, which is quite a popular one. That's normally where you can take a picture and it sort of it gives the background a proper blur. So you get a nice, good, wonderful portrait effect with it. You can do time-lapse photography with it, so you can set it so it'll take so many pictures. Uh, sometimes it does video, though it depends on the make and model of your phone. Um, we've got all the different settings, so there's so many different settings you can change, how you want the camera app to open, how, uh, how quickly you want it to do certain bits and pieces, uh, all sorts of wonderful little settings there to have a play with. Uh, we've got the pro mode, which we'll go into a little bit later on. Slow motion is for video, um, so again, we won't be looking at that today. We've got your new video, your nightscape. Now, most modern cameras now have these new nightscape modes where they can take photos in more or less complete darkness. Uh, and some of the shots you can get with that actually are quite surprising. It's, uh, it's amazing what you do. You have to hold your, your phone very steady, but sometimes it will take a... 10, 15, 20, even a 30 second exposure uh, and then the software inside works it all out for you and actually some of them are, are quite impressive. Uh, and then you've got your panorama um, and again that's one that is very handy. This again depends on the phone, some of the software on it is is better than others uh, depending on the makes. Obviously the more expensive makes have very good software for this sort of thing. Um, but tap on the panorama and show you. So as I've got my phone currently in a landscape format, it will do a vertical panorama. So you can go from top to bottom. If I was to turn the phone the other way on, in fact, I'll just do that, just take it out of its holder, bear with me. Oh. As you can see, so now if I was to put that, I should be able to. Turn it to the right, and it will give me a panoramic shot. Now, I've just done that very dodgily, and as you can see, it hasn't come out very well. But if you've got the time, you can actually uh, set that up. If it's best on a tripod, if you can, really, um, to get a good shot. So that's that. I'm just going to put that back in there. So that's your landscape mode. So, um, pro mode. Now, this is amazing. I didn't realize just how advanced some of these settings are. First thing you can notice straight away off the top is in the top middle section there, I've got a histogram. So if I make it darker or lighter by putting my hand in front of the light, you can see the histogram moving there. So you actually have a live histogram as you work. Um, and then on the left hand side, Again, I've got my screen size, my timer, and I very interesting to see on the left-hand side here, I've got a RAW setting. So I actually can actually shoot RAW photos on this phone. I'll just bring that menu up, and as you can see, 
Yep, top one is RAW. Middle one is uh, JPEG at 48 megapixels. Uh, and then the very bottom one is JPEG, which I think on this particular phone is, I think it's 16 megapixels. Um, so again, you've got a good combination conversation, but you can work in RAW, so you can adjust um, better in on the editing suite later on if you so wish. And then we've got all the usual characters that you would normally find on your phone. So we've got your ISO, your white balance, shutter speed, focal point, and your uh, uh, auto correction. So I'll just tap on that one first. So we can go up two stops or down two stops, depending on how you want to do it. And as you can see, it gives you a guide there of what your wall. There we go. <laughs> Very bright. So you can choose that as and so how you wish. Next one down, we've got the focal point. So I can go from right up close. So I put my finger in there, it's very close. Ooh, there we go, very close. And you can take it all the way out to the further settings. So as you can see, the sofa is actually going out. So I'll put that back onto auto. The next one down is our shutter speed. So we can go for anything from one eight thousandth to I think that's 30 seconds. So if I were to, yeah. As you can see, it's completely blown out as you'd expect. And I imagine that's going to be virtually pitch black. But again, you can see the histograms changing there as you go. So you can adjust it how you want, and the histogram will alter automatically. White balance, again, in Kelvin, you can just go completely through the range, give everything a wonderful shade depending on what you're doing from top to bottom. And then obviously, we've got the ISO. So again, you can ramp the ISO up if need be. Or down to 100. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Is it in the camera here? Auto. There we go. Uh, so that's your pro mode. Not all cameras have a pro mode on your phone. Uh, some do, some don't. But some have quite a good selection of settings and you can just do things manually. Okay, so accessories. Some of you might be thinking, well, what kind of accessories can you get for a mobile phone camera? Well, actually, there's quite a few. Uh, I'm going to start off first off with this little clip-on lens set. <clears throat> These are very basic, very simple. It just works by clipping on to the back of the phone. Got little lens caps there. And on this particular one I've got here, I've got a wide-angle lens and a macro lens, so I can just unscrew whichever one I don't want. Then all you simply do is clip it on over your camera lens like this, and then voila, you have different different lenses for taking different styles of pictures. Uh, these start at three pound and can go up from there. You can get some that have uh, ND filters and uh, polarizers and things like that. So again, it's a nice little option. Doesn't take up much space. You can just carry that with you in your pocket and it just gives you a little bit more flexibility for taking pictures. Okay, so my next one <clears throat> is a little phone mount. Now this is for tripods. So what you would do is you would attach it to your tripod by screwing in and then you just simply fasten that in there like that. That's got a good holly phone and of course you are then mounted on a tripod. Uh, this is good for taking uh, pictures where say you're doing a landscape or something like a nightscape and you don't want it to move. Uh, you don't want to sort of knock, knock the picture as such. Um, I've got here my little gorilla pod mount so that again that I just screw on there. Right. Oh, <laughs> he says, I'm like that. And then I can just take my gorilla pod, pop that in there. I have completely got that the wrong way around, that doesn't matter. And then you can take pictures, set it up however you want. <clears throat> uh, the other option also is if you're doing a panorama, you can have it set up on a wall, a gate, or anything like that out in the open. And you can actually literally just loosen it off and you can turn it for your panorama to help keep it steadier. 
Now this mount will go on um, full size tripods. I've used it on mine before for doing a panorama. Um, so it's quite a handy little thing to have. Again, it doesn't take up much space. You can just carry that with you. Pop that in your pocket or in your camera bag or, or anything, any way you choose to carry it. That just gives you a few more options. Now combine that with my last little one, which is a Bluetooth remote control. Now that is something again, very small, you fit in your pocket. Similar thing, you can set it up using your little tripod holder. Uh, you can use a Gorilla Pod or a full-size tripod. Uh, and then it works via Bluetooth, so you just switch it on on the little uh, switch on the side. Hook it up to your phone via Bluetooth. And then you can literally just fire the shutter from a distance without having to have any camera shake. Um, again, you can get your little uh, tripod mount from anything from three to four pounds upwards. And the little remote controls, I think the cheapest, I've seen them as about five or six pounds. But again, it's just something handy that you can use when you're out and about. Uh, again, it, it wasn't take up much space. And you've got these items. You can certainly... <coughs> get some good pictures. Okay, so now I'm just going to show you a couple of apps. Uh, there are hundreds, literally thousands of different types. Some for taking photos and some for processing photos. I'm today just going to show you the two that I would use or do normally use. One is for taking and one is for editing. So the one I'm going to show you is called Prisma. So this is for, you can, well you can, you can take photos in it, but you can also edit as well. Uh, so if I just tap on that one, now I've just got my little guy again there. Uh, so let's just get him focused. And I'm going to just take a picture, like so. And you get a load of bumps as normal unless you pay for the pro version. Uh, right, so on this, on the bottom you can see are lots of different options. Uh, and you can do all sorts. So if I just tap on one of these, it will give me an effect. Uh, and this is for sort of really creating some very arty work, as you can see there. Uh, but you can also, if you tap on the screen, you can adjust oh my, how side to side looks. So I can go back to the original photo, and by pressing and holding the screen again to the right, we get this other effect. Uh, and there are quite a few different ones that you can just pick and choose. So again, another one. Uh, there are a lot of ones, but again, if you're happy to pay for the pro version, you can do so. As such, but you can just do something a little bit different with them. And all I'm doing here is just tapping on the different filters to see what sort of effect they give me. Just a bit of fun, but it's it's a handy little app, and sometimes you can just go a little bit crazy with it. Uh, you can then download it using the little download uh, on the left hand side you can share it pick and choose and choose how you want to send it uh, and then one in the middle you've got your little settings so again you can just adjust literally just by sliding your fingers the contrast and you can also just do your cropping as well so you can either choose how you want it in all your different ratios so that's Prisma. So the next one I'm going to show you is my favourite editor, which is Snapseed, uh, which is owned by Google. So I'm just going to open this up, take a picture. We've already got one there. Open now across the bottom, you can see are all the different types of settings for different types of pictures. So you can do all sorts of bits and pieces. They're all presets. So you could just pick one of those if you so wished. Everything right down to some black and whites. Let's set that one there for another one if you like. Uh, and then if you click on the Tools tab on the bottom there, this basically gives you a list of all the different bits and pieces you can do with it. And as you can see, there are quite a few. Um, you can do um, tune image. So again, you can just tune brightness, contrast, up and down so it's very simple you literally just go up and down depending on where you want to go 
and you can just play with it to your heart's content. Very simple, very easy to use. Uh, you can even have a little auto setting if you so wish. I'm going to just click the little tick button just to save your settings. I'm going to go back into tools again, give you another detail. So we've got details. So on this one, we've got st structure and sharpening. So again, you just tap and hold and move, and then you can really punch it out depending on how you want to do with it. Sharpen it up a little bit. Uh, we've got the curves, white balance, crop. I don't need to go through those for you. Rotate, obviously. Perspective. So you can change your lines and it will sort of fill in the gaps a bit for you. It's quite a good one. And we've got expand. So you can take in more of the picture if you want to, a bit like you can on Photoshop. Selective is all your different selective bits and pieces. So you can highlight certain bits and pieces you want to work on and <laughs> how you want to work on them. Again, you've got an auto eye correction and some other bits and pieces in there. Uh, we've got brushes, we've got healing brushes, HDR, Glamour Glow, tonal contrast, so you can, you can change the entire tonal contrast. Uh, drama vintage, if you want to give it a vintage look, uh, we can give it an old sort of style. Again, you can just dial up or down, change your vignette strength, style strength. You can really change it up as much as you like. And if you click on the little section of cards there, you can just choose all your different colours. Back into tools. We've got grainy film, retro looks, grunge. These are all just looks. Again, you can go full black and white, noir, portrait mode, head pose, lens blur. That's quite a good one. So you can have it. So let's just, and I'm just using two fingers now just to drag and move that around and kind of keep him in a little bit. Just going to turn it slightly so we get the sword tip in there. And then I can blur out everything else. But you can change. Oops. <laughs> you can change all your different settings on there. Vignette, you've got double exposures. Text, which is one of my favorites, as some of the members will already know. If you come down here to your little speech bubbles, you can just give them a little speech bubble. Let me shrink it down a little bit. There we go. And then you just whatever you want to type in there you can do oops pressed the wrong button go back there we go down so you see like that and then you can just tap in your tick and that's saved on there and then if you want to give them frames again there's a whole different world section you can change the size of it it's literally just so simple so easy to use literally a bit of fun and then you can export it you can export it um, as it is you can uh, save a copy and whatnot but on this one actually if you like me I can actually take pictures on my DSLR I can then transfer them over via the app over Wi-Fi uh, and keep the megapixel size and then I can alter it in here and export the file at exactly the same size so that's quite handy for if you want to just do a quick quick work up on your uh, camera photos um, but you can change all the settings and you can undo and redo as so much like and it's, it's very simple to do very easy uh, like I say you can put all sorts of wonderful weird and wonderful effects on it and just play around with it for hours um, it's a great little app it really is I've just touched that again and shouldn't have done but give me that uh, and you can just play away to your heart's content um, I say there is a version of Lightroom. I, I believe now it's they've taken um, some more bits and pieces off the free version. Uh, if you use the paid version, it's got a lot more to it. But those are just a couple of the apps that I like to use. Okay, so that's pretty much it from me. Uh, I hope you've maybe learned a little bit something about the thing that you carry around with you every day. Uh, it certainly is a very handy tool and. There are some wonderful images out there if you look online. I know the iPhone contest produces some absolutely wonderful pictures. Um, they are becoming more and more advanced by the day, um, especially when you see all these different formats of different lenses on the back. So it's a really handy thing to have. Um, and I hope you've learned a little bit from me. So until then, take care, stay safe, and I hope to see you all soon. Bye-bye now.